Hey guys, so today I'm joined by a special guest. Uh, it is James Patton from Doc Raptor. So a few episodes ago on the 4th of December, I guess I made an episode about how to generate PDFs using the Doc Raptor API tool. And uh, actually James uh, contacted me and uh, they decided to sponsor an uh, episode and uh, we, are, we can now learn more about Doc Raptor and about other ways of generating PDFs and uh, uh, like what's the point of using Doc Raptor, what other tools there are. So uh, hello, James. Hi, thanks for having me. Uh, yeah, so um, the Corruptor is uh, kind of an API wrapper around the Prince uh, XML thing. And uh, can you tell me what this Prince XML thing is? Yeah, so that's, uh, that, that's a big story at its core. Prince is an HTML rendering engine. So just like your web browser, Chrome, Firefox, Safari, take HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and render a web page, uh, Prince does the same, but it renders a PDF instead. So Doc Raptor uses Prince in the background to do the PDF generation part of Doc Raptor. We wrap some additional JavaScript around that, JavaScript processing, a lot of sustainability, not sustainability, but compatibility and um, things to make sure that Doc Raptor stays up all the time, that you've got pretty much unlimited bandwidth uh, resources behind it. So you don't have any problems with maintaining the server infrastructures when you're rendering PDFs. But at the core, Prince itself is just a PDF rendering engine. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you compare uh, Prince uh, to uh, like headless browsers, for example, like uh, when would you use Prince? When would you use a headless uh, browser to uh, like kind of open a web page and uh, uh, save it as PDF? Yeah, great question. So essentially there's there's three different options you're gonna have for rendering a, a PDF from HTML or, or maybe four even. So, so on one hand, you have the headless browsers. Um, historically, that was WK HTML to PDF or Phantom JSS. The more modern versions are going to be puppeteer based. Uh, so that's one option. You've then you've got commercial libraries like Prince, uh, PDF Rack, Raptor, Atena House. There's a number of those, uh, and Doc Raptor's a, a you know an API wrapper around that. The third option is you have open source tools that are not based on the browsers, and that's going to be things like a Wheezy Print, which is Python based rendering engine. And then the fourth option is you've got things like LaTeX and these other technologies you can use to to process HTML to a PDF. So at at its core difference um, between a browser and Prince and Doc Raptor is that. One of them is designed for PDFs, that's prints, and the other is designed for making web pages. And the difference becomes really important when you get into anything but the most simple single page PDF. And the difference at the core is that browsers like Chrome make continuous scrolling web pages. So when you go through a web page and you scroll on your mouse, or your trackpad, it just keeps going down and keeps going up and there's no breaks in the page. There's no concept of a, a page at all. Uh, what page are you on? What number is it? What is the header of this page? What is the footer of the page? What is the size of the page? Those are concepts that don't apply at all to a website. Um, now, Prince, on the other hand, was built from the ground up for taking HTML and CSS and JavaScript and turning those into paged documents. Um, so if you, again, are making a one-page invoice, a uh, little simple brochure, a lot of times Puppeteer and Chrome do fantastic. They are, they're fast, um, they're easy, they they are great. Where you're going to run into problems or a lot of these edge cases where you want to make a really attractive, pretty, complex document with lots of pages. And these edge cases, they, they sort of sneak up on you. It could be as simple as, well, you want to have two different sizes in your in your document. You want to have a landscape page and a portrait page. You can't do that in Chrome. You may want to have a title page that has no header, whereas the rest of your pages on your document do have headers. You can't do that in Chrome. You might want footnotes just like a book where you know you put that little number there beside the sentence and at the bottom of the page there's a footnote. You cannot do that in Chrome. Chrome doesn't have an understanding of a concept of a bottom of a page because it doesn't have the concept of a page. 
So they, the browsers have just the very most minimal ability to render a document so they can do the print to PDF feature. And so you can't do it. Um, and then there's, you can throw on sometimes with enough work, you can throw on a little bit of JavaScript to make it work, but it's really hacky. It takes a lot of development time. Um, it's not very flexible or scalable where if you've got dynamic content of dynamic length, maybe you have a table or an image and what happens if that table or image doesn't fit on the page? How is the document going to be rendered? So at its core, those differences among, let's say some quality and detail differences make up the differences between Chrome and Prince and that Prince is gonna have higher quality documents. They're gonna have more flexibility. It's gonna have um, print specific options like duplex printing. If you want to print on both sides, the piece of paper, you can control that by CSS and prints. And prints with JavaScript, you can actually access the, the PDF boxes themselves. So a PDF is just a box of, of you know, it's a, it's a box of things put in a document, very similar to HTML, but with, with Prince's JavaScript engine, you can actually change and modify those boxes post-rendering, or you can re-render the entire document multiple times and be like, okay, let's render this HTML one time. Um, do we want to increase or decrease the size of this header to better match the width of the document? Okay, let's increase the size of the header, re-render it again, and now we have perfectly fit text to go with our document. So there's a lot of these kinds of advanced functionality that make Prince and Docker after a great fit for, for PDF rendering. Um, and then if you've got a really simple document, you don't need us at all. We're, we're, it's Prince is not cheap. Doc Raptor is not going to be the most affordable option out there. Um, it's really a premium option for those who need the best PDFs. So, uh, sorry, I talked a lot there. I, ho I hope that helps. Yeah, I I'm just like, uh, listen, and wow, there can be really a lot of... Uh, uh... A lot of challenges uh, if you go really deep into the weeds of uh, generating PDFs. Uh, when I think of generating a PDF, my first thoughts are like a one-page invoice or like a certificate. I know like employee of the month or certificate of uh, like finishing a course. Uh, but uh, really, if you like generate uh, multiple pages as PDF and in headers, footers, uh, landscape and portrait. So, yeah. Yeah, uh, I mean, sense. a lot of it's about what what kind of document you want to make if you want to make something that's designed to be printed professionally like a book or a pamphlet um you need something a little more powerful than chrome most of the time but as you said if you're just doing a one-page invoice then yeah use puppeteer doc raptors overkill for the pdf rendering side now the, the other part that's worth considering is that that running a browser, an entire browser engine on your web server is very resource intensive. It's a lot more resource intensive than just using a database lookup and rendering some HTML. You're at, or you know echoing out some HTML to the browser. You're actually rendering graphics, vector graphics, raster graphics. You're processing JavaScript. It's a lot more happening to make a PDF than it is to generate the website HTML. Uh, to send out for your web server. So if you need to send, create one document, that's no big deal. Maybe it takes five seconds and you're done. But five seconds is a long time compared to most web server loads, which you want under a second. So now if you need to make a thousand documents or if you need to make a hundred documents simultaneously, you have to think about your render, your, your resource needs in terms of your infrastructure, how many servers or you know you can do this cloudless too, but how many how many are you going to have dedicated to making sure your PDF inf generating infrastructure meets your needs? Then again, if you're making a couple invoices here or there, no big deal. But if you're a you know giant corporation and people could be downloading their financial or tax statements at any given time, or if you're generating you know batch jobs of a thousand ebooks every night, you have to think more about your infrastructures. And that's the other use case where Docker comes in handy is that you don't have to worry about that with us because we do that for you. So we do that. We do it in a compliant way that meets the EU regulations, that meets that's uh, SOC 2 verified, um, which is the U.S. international standard for security and privacy. Uh, we meet HIPAA requirements if you're dealing with U.S.-based medical documents. So there's a lot of these kinds of infrastructure needs that Doc Raptor brings in as well. And again, you can always do that yourself with Chrome. It's always just a matter of 
how much time and resource and energy you need and your your you know your business or organization want, is willing to put into this. So that that's up to your team. Um, but you know, how many tens or hundreds of hours do you want to dedicate to setting up and maintaining the infrastructure? And that's where Doc Raptor and you know most API services you know, flourish is that the APIs allow your team to focus on what you're good at and what you really need done. And you can outsource the rest to a, to a provider. You know, uh, when I first, uh, found out about the uh, WK HTML to PDF, I thought, uh, okay, like here's an open source tool that, uh, you can just use for generating PDFs. And, uh, that's all you need. Like it is uh, such a fundamental thing that uh, we should take as granted. Uh, so like just some kind of uh, tool to turn HTML to PDF, but uh, there can really be a lot of a lot of tiny bits here and there. Yeah, and that's uh, how we that's how we got started. It was it was we had we were back in the day a consulting company, and a giant customer of ours asked us to make a PDF export for their application, mm -hmm. and we couldn't do it. WK HTML to PDF couldn't do it. And so, you know, we were banging our heads on our desk for like a couple of days. And finally we found prints and we're like, well, this is dumb. We should make it easier to use prints and more affordable to use prints. If you use a upfront license for prints, it's like five, five grand or something, which, which is a lot. It saves, still saves money, in many organizations, but it's a lot for a small business. Like, like we were. Um, and so that's why we made doc wrap there just to help out other people with the same problem of what happens when WKHML to PDF isn't good enough. Yeah, and uh, if I remember the pricing correctly, it uh, is around like 12 cents per uh, document. It scales a lot cheaper on obviously the larger plans, but that's the starting cost and there's free plans mm -hmm. uh, that are available as well. Yeah, and uh, it is per document, not per page. Correct, and, and that's, a, that's a unique... Uh, unique difference in sort of our pricing model. There's a lot of other HTML to PDF APIs that are available. Uh, all of them except us. We're the only one that's that's based off of prints. We're the only one that's not based off of an open source browser. So all these other guys mm -hmm. are using are using Chrome in the background or an old version of WebKit or something. Um, the same thing you're you're going to be using if you download Puppeteer. And a lot of them will have complex pricing models that are per document size or per page. And Doc Raptor just doesn't do that. It's it's just one price per the document, uh, depending on your plan and like how many you prepaid for. So it, it's a very different pricing model. You sort of know what you're going to get. Um, it doesn't change depending on how big your document is or things like that. Yeah, good point. Yeah, uh, actually just today while uh, researching for the episode, I saw a couple of tools that for Puppeteer as a service. Yeah, and if they don't say they're puppeteer as a service, they probably are puppeteer as a service. They just don't say that. So, and again, nothing wrong with any of those tools. They're all they're all as far as like we can tell, pretty good. Um, none of them have our infrastructure guarantees or the level of compliance we have. We're sort of the 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 largest player in the space. Um, but as far as I can tell, most of them have pretty good uptime and they get the job done. So. If you have a simple PDF, they're great tools. Um, I mentioned earlier at the beginning that the other one I'd look at is Wheezy Print. Uh, Wheezy Print is a great open source tool that that is more focused on the paged media like prints is. So it's built from the ground up for PDFs. It's not browser based. It's not based off this you know continuously scaling model. It's built for page documents. Um, I think you'll find again on the edge cases that that Doc Raptor and Prints provide more functionality and have less problems and issues and bugs overall. But especially if your document's simpler, you know, there are great open source tools you can use too. You don't always need Doc Raptor. Yeah, cool. I will leave uh, a link to vcprint.org vis, vis, in the description. Actually, uh, I see the picture. That's the Doc Raptor logo, right? It is, you know, we're helping them out a little bit. We're giving them, you know, a little sponsorship just to pay back to the community. Um, you know, I don't think we currently use them in any of our, our our technology right now, but there may come a day when, you know, we'll offer Wheezy Print alongside of Prints or other services or something like that. That's all very, very out there right now. We're very Prints focused. 
but it's it's a, it's a great tool and we want to keep the ecosystem going and you know conversations like this where we're, anything we can do to help people understand you know as you asked what is the difference between puppeteer and dog raptor and puppeteer and wheezy print and for a lot of people, it's not a big difference. But then, then you get stuck. You try and do that one little thing, and then you're like five days deep in your development and banging your head. And if you had just started with the most powerful tool in the first place, it'd be easier. Mm -hmm. Cool. Uh, so yeah, thanks for guiding me through like the rabbit hole of generating PDFs and uh, the alternative tools. That's uh, also great to hear. Awesome. Happy, happy to talk. Thanks for letting us share. Any other questions or anything I can answer? Um, I guess uh, there might be some questions in the comments. So guys, feel free to leave uh, questions about like PDF generation uh, in the comments and maybe James will give you some answers. Yeah, that'd be great. Be happy to jump in. Thanks, everybody. Bye.